Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing an unboxing and review video on this brand new Creality Ender 3. Now the good people over at Pergear have sent this unit to me uh, to give a honest review and critique the unit. And I'm sort of excited about reviewing this one today because I haven't done a printer on this channel for quite some time. For those that watch my videos, you'll notice that I'm into CNC machining predominantly, where a 3D printer, I kind of leave that up to the professionals, okay? However, I use 3D printing for proof of concept uh, before I actually CNC machine a part. So anyway, what is this Creality Ender number three? Well, it's a new version two Neo. Okay, it has a lot of upgraded features and I'll read some of these out for you now before I do the unboxing. So one is auto leveling full metal Bowden extruder, uh, spring steel printing platform, three-step assembly. You can preview the print with a new user interface, uh, classic and stable integrated design, a silent main, main board, which results in quieter printing, uh, the built-in toolbox, a knob tensioner, and best of all, a resume printing function. So let's start unboxing this. As I stated in the video, this was sent to me by a company called Pergear, and they're an Amazon seller. So this came shipped directly to my door from Amazon, and it was quite quick really. It was, um, I was told the day before, and it arrived the next day. And here's our 3D printer in the box. So, time to open the other side. Always be careful opening a box with your box cutter. A, you don't want to hurt yourself, and B, press too hard, you could cut into your product. As you can see, it comes very sturdily packaged. Heaps of protective foam in here. And it's quite cool. All right, what have we got? We've got a 3D printer quick start menu, which comes out of the box first, followed by some uh, test filament, some other consumable items. We've got our power cord. You'll notice here that it is a Australian cord for Australian single phase power points, 10 amp standard plug. Your good old trusty paint scraper to get the print off the bed. Pull out the next piece, we've got a, this is obviously the control panel. And now it gets down to the meat of the assembly and this looks like our frame. So we'll lift that up carefully. It looks like a, the upright frame with some stepper motors coming out of the box. And there we have it. We'll get this on the bench here that down gently for a second. We'll just check the box and make sure there's nothing else inside that we need to clean out. And it looks like we've got everything. All right, step one I would say would be going to the instruction manual and looking what we have to do here today to assemble this unit. The good thing with Creality, they actually usually send very good instructions. So in the instructions we'll list all the main parts that come with it and a detailed diagram that just shows you how to assemble it. So it's a pictorial diagram and it's a little bit similar to like Ikea products that you'd get uh, with photos, how to step-by-step -step assemble them on the first and second page. And it's in English, which is good. And I believe further on there is our other um, instructions to in different languages. Comes with a warranty card as well. So don't forget to fill out your warranty card. Alrighty, so let's start assembling this. Pulled apart the accessories kit here and notice there's, uh, that's the tooling, all the tooling you need. So we've got some, some Allen keys, a small screwdriver. We've got our cap head bolts for mounting the upright frame. We've got some test filament here. A pair of cutters as well, or side cutters. And some zip ties. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually assemble the gantry frame to the base frame component. 
Now these cap head bolts come in from underneath, so we'll need to undo the bag. to get out our cap head bolts or cap head screws. Now, when we're moving this around, we've got to be careful of the cables that we don't damage them. So I'm going to tilt it on its side. It may be better to stand this upright this way, just carefully without hurting anything or damaging anything. Okay, so we've got the four bolts in. We can tighten them up now. And just don't try not to be too heavy handed when doing this. Uh, the old fashioned method of stripping it and backing it off half a turn doesn't work well here in this scenario. Alrighty, so we got that on. Now we can put it down onto its rubber feet. Okay, the next operation in the steps in the instruction book is to fit the PLA or the um, filament holder rack on top of the machine here. Now you will notice that I didn't pull that out in the unboxing. It was actually, because it was black, it was hard to see. It was um, camouflaged. So luckily I checked the manual and always refer to your manual when you're assembling this sort of stuff. Now it's quite easy. These are just like little T-nuts that you need to install. You'll notice that it goes the opposite way to the head. So we can put that in the, in the rack, twist them sideways and then rotate it to tighten. I'm sort of happy with that. We can now put on the control panel. Now the control panel will go on the front of the machine to the right hand side. I suggest with the control panel just to drop off the bracket. It's um, a slotted bracket here, it will come off. Put it down, be careful, it's got protective film on it, so make sure you keep that on so you don't scratch the screen. I might just tip him over the side just carefully for a minute. And just nice and gently, just to get at it. I'm surprised how easily these T-nuts lock into the frame and tighten up. I thought I'd have all sorts of trouble trying to align them to get them to hold. But yeah, as you tighten, they just bite in which is good. Remember this is plastic, so don't over tighten it or you'll crack it. We, our two locating pins go in here. We slide it down and it will make a snapping sound when you're in correctly. There we go. We can now plug in our cable. Notice the cable is directional. So line up the slot and push that in as well. Okay, so there we have it. Now we've still got some stuff here to connect by the looks of things on the other side here. And these are for our servo and extruder motors, all right? Now, before you can start using your 3D printer, you'll have to level the bed mechanically. So go into the prepare menu, scroll down to the Z offset button, activate it, and start winding the knob down, which is lowering the gantry frame down to the table. Use a business card or something similar and gently place it underneath the extruder nozzle until you feel a slight amount of pressure or drag. Once that is done, we go back into the prepare menu and we can disable the stepper motor. With the stepper motor disabled, once again, check your card is still tight. Slide the gantry head over and towards the back. Now start from the corners and work your way around the bed, adjusting the thumb wheels underneath the table up or down to suit to make sure that that height is consistent all the way around the perimeter. You'll see here that I'm adjusting the knob, putting a little bit more friction on it. Now when you slide the gantry head, be mindful not to press down on it because the gantry will drop. Okay, so it's very critical that you don't try to lift up on the gantry or push down on the gantry. Now, you'll need to repeat this process on every corner. It's very important you do this, although it has auto leveling function, it won't work if it's way out of whack. Okay, so like it get one or two millimeters out, it's just it'll be too hard on the machine. Okay, so once we do that now, now we can do an automatic leveling.
Now that we've completed the mechanical bed leveling, we can now go through into the system and do the automatic bed leveling. So select leveling from the console and you'll notice the sensor will drop down and it will start doing a 16 point inspection of the table. Now this automatic bed leveling, you'll see it will come down and strike the table twice, lift back up, and this is really, really cool function. And uh, I know it may be a common feature in most modern 3D printers, but uh, this is definitely a game changer from the, especially the older styles like the older Wan Howe printer that I have. So like I said, 16 point calibration, and it will come back into the center. Now, once it comes back in the center, you need to adjust your Z offset one more time. So using your business card or something, adjust that dial up and down till you get some slight drag on the business card. All right, let's load some filament and let's start 3D printing. About to load the test material they provided. I just sat it up here on the spool holder. I'm bringing this down, I'm pressing on the, depressing the lever on the Bowden extruder and just slightly feeding that through like so. And just pushing it all the way down as far as I can get it manually. And I reckon I'm all the way down now to the head or close to it. So now we can load a file and see if it will print. One of the good things about the Creality system is that they actually provide you with a USB to micro SD card uh, ready to go, okay, which I think is great because especially if your computer doesn't have an SD card reader like some of the new computers, they've always got a USB port. So by getting taking the card out of that little holder and sticking it in the front, you will notice that you'll have to turn the card upside down to put it into the front of the machine. What we can do now is go into our print menu here and then pick up the little rabbit one. I can cancel that one. You'll notice it comes up with a profile. And this one here is the Benchy. We may not have enough filament to do Benchy, but we'll give it a try. So let's confirm it and let's see what it's going to do. So it'll be currently preheating the bed, preheating the extruder element, and then we'll get going. So my overall impression of the printer is that it's excellent. I think it's great value for money and I'm quite happy with the prints that I've been getting off it. One thing I like about it is that it just works each time, every time. So once I leveled the bed properly, put a little tiny little bit of uh, Yoohoo glue down on the bed, I've been getting print after print after print. So, so far I've printed off about 10 objects off this little uh, printer in the testing phase and very, very happy with it. So I've been predominantly printing the Rabbit and the Benchy, and they've been coming out pretty much faultlessly. There's a couple of little blemishes in there, but I don't know if that's the, a STL blemish in the model, okay, or it's a blemish in the printer. So that's something, and I don't have these files to look at, they're only on the SD card. So, but overall, um, I think it's great bang for value and I, I support it 100%. I'm very happy with it. It's quite a rigid machine. So the user interface is very intuitive. It's very easy to use. And I had not many problems at all trying to get this up and running. So from opening in the box to up and running, uh, very quick time, anywhere between half an hour to an hour. So anyway, um, check out, there'll be a product code in the description area and by all means, go out today and grab yourself one. Thanks again to Pergear for allowing me the opportunity to review this product today. And at the end of the day, this is not a product placement ad. Uh, this was provided as a demonstration unit for me to use. Uh, I'll be paying it forward now. I'll be donating this 3D printer to the Institute where I work and it will go into our CAD classroom 
and allow our students access to it. Now you may be wondering what we're going to do with it. So we'll be doing you know, proof of concept parts, but also uh, if the students want to print off some of these little items, they can do it as well. By the way, we have a very expensive Mark Forge printer, okay, which is, does uh, infuse carbon fibre, but this allows us to give us a cheaper option to rapid prototype because the cost between a Mark Forge part and one of these parts is many dollars. So as for the Mark Forge part, to provide you with an example, this clutch lever or brake lever that we printed in infused carbon fibre, Mark Forge as you print actually gives you a costing and that was about $15, okay? However, these little items here in PLA, uh, which is fairly cheap, it's probably 15 cents. So in closing today, go out, grab yourself one, Look for Per Gear, they're an Amazon seller. Use the product code and I'll see you on the next Design Creativity and Technology Channel video. Bye for now, bye bye.